Welcome to the Grateful American series, an interactive multimedia program designed to restore enthusiasm in American history for kids and adults too. Creator of this series is David Bruce Smith, an author and publisher here in Washington, D.C. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, your co-host, founder of Incandescent Public Relations and Incandescent TV. We are here today at the magnificent Mount Vernon estate on the back porch where George and Martha Washington used to have cocktails in the evening with Kurt V. Brands, who is the president and CEO of the Mount Vernon Ladies Association, which has been in existence since 1853. Thank you for being on the show, Kurt. Thanks, folks. Thank you, David, for having Thank me. Thank you. Delighted to have you all here at Mount Vernon. So this is the most magnificent setting right on the Potomac. Tell us a little bit about where we are. So this home was built originally in the early 1730s uh, called Little Hunting Creek. It was renamed by Washington's half-brother uh, as uh, Mount Vernon, uh, recognizing the incredible view up here on the promontory. And also in, uh, he, he served in the uh, Royal Navy under Admiral Vernon. And uh, he died suddenly at an early age, uh, and Washington ultimately inherited the house from his widow. And it was Washington who then sort of built the home to what we see here. Similar to Jefferson at Monticello, did he keep taking things down and building them back up? Uh, no, I mean, not so much as Jefferson would have done that. It was more sort of additions to what was a very modest, almost a farmhouse when it was a little hunting break. So what would it have been like out here on the veranda in the evening? Well, I mean, in truth, he, he was away from the, he was away from the estate for 16 years. Eight as the head of the Continental Army, and then eight again in the presidency. And when he was here, he was a very active plantation owner, so he was out working all the time. So, knowing what you know about George Washington, yes, is he knowable? I, I mean, I, I, Joe Ellis would say, you know, that he's the man on the moon, and that you know, we're, he's much beloved but not understood. But I think if you actually dig deep, two things you can begin to understand him a bit more as really a human being. And also as you dig deep, you become even more impressed by the decisions he made, and especially about his willingness to sort of give up power in the interest of, uh, of, of the good of others and the national good. Okay, so I want to take a little poetic license here. Sure. If George Washington was either your, your brother or your best friend, how would you describe him? Uh, I would say, you know, dashing, nearly 6'3", and so probably a head taller than most people during his time. I would say, uh, actually, a great dancer. So there's an aside to him, you know, he, he, uh, he enjoyed a good time. Okay, not to, not to leave Martha out, yeah. is her first ladyship, or her, her reign as first lady, um, rateable? By the time you reach 1789, she clearly is interested in returning to Mount Vernon. And she is, I think, wary about all of the public uh, things that he has done, and even perhaps whether or not it's taking a toll on itself. So she goes to Philadelphia reluctantly, but realizing she needs to do that for the good of the country. Okay, and if you study them, Martha and George, yes. are they knowable? Oh yeah, I mean, I, I, that's that's a great question. You know, they spent great, great uh, periods of time away from each other. Um, unfortunately, as you know, Martha elected to burn most of the letters, so virtually all, all of the correspondence between the two of them is lost. Um, we do have one letter, and he said, I retain an, un an unalterable affection for you, which neither time nor distance can diminish. So it's clear that, you know, they, they loved each other a great deal. And I think they were, uh, she was his anchor. Uh, you know, she understood that many times she would have to sacrifice for the greater good. It's clear that she probably did not want him to take over as the first president of the United States. I mean, didn't want to pick up and go to Philadelphia. There were lots of sort of protocols or conventions that had come down from uh, Europe that she had to sort of accept, like not being able to go out to dinner in a private home. But she did that for him, and she was incredibly devoted to him, including following him through many of the campaigns. Valley Forge. You know, so, and she was much beloved by the soldiers, so, and, and would intercede on their behalf, would try to help them out, and so um, really sort of a, a woman of the people. 
Thank you so much for being with us. You are watching The Grateful American TV Show, a video production of David Bruce Smith's Grateful American Foundation. Watch more episodes at www.gratefulamericantv.com. And follow our TV show, radio show, monthly newsletter, and upcoming books at our website, www.gratefulamericanfoundation.com. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, your co-host. On behalf of David Bruce Smith and myself, we look forward to restoring enthusiasm in American history for you and your kids. We'll talk to you soon.